The Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. Makers of Johnson Wax products for home and industry present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. One of the reasons you have linoleum on your kitchen floor is because it has a bright, colorful pattern that makes your kitchen a more cheerful place in which to work. But if you don't take proper care of linoleum, it loses its beauty. And if you scrub it continuously, it begins to break down. So when you protect it with Johnson's Glow Coat, you accomplish two things. You preserve its original color and beautiful pattern, and you make it last a much longer time. And, of course, in addition, you save yourself lots of work all year round because Glow Coat is self-polishing. It needs no rubbing or buffing. It takes practically no work from you. Simply apply and let dry. That's the Glow Coat story. The tough film of Glow Coat guards the surface against wear, dirt, and moisture, seals the pores, gives a beautiful polish that's easy to maintain. Why not join the legion of satisfied users of Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat? You know what an auction room is. It's an indoor junkyard, where if the auctioneer catches you nodding, you're the new owner of an antique cobbler's bench that your ten-year-old son could have made a better one in manual training. But auctions have a definite fascination for some people, among them being Fibber McGee and Molly. Ten dollars. Says $10 for this lovely tea caddy. A genuine antique, a gift from Julius Caesar to Marie Antoinette. Do I have 15? 15. For goodness sakes, McGee, stop bidding. We don't need a tea caddy. I can carry my own tea. <laughs> oh, I won't get it. I'm just having fun. I get a bang out of auctions. Somebody will top my bid like 1750. See? <laughs> 1750, I'm bid. Do I have 20? Going once at seventeen fifty, going twice at seventeen fifty, going three times at seventeen fifty. Sold for three times seventeen fifty, which is exactly fifty two fifty to the lucky gentleman in the fourth row. Well, I never heard of such a thing. Come on, McGee, let's go home. The weather has cleared up, and we've proved we knew enough to come in out of the rain. Oh, let's stick around a while. I love these things. <laughs> Item four twelve, as you will see by your catalogs, ladies and gentlemen. This is an inlaid high boy. Hi, boy. Hi. <laughs> this is an inlaid high boy of rosewood and ivory from the palace of the Grand Duke, which was situated on the rapids of the Danube. To prove it's authentic, ladies and gentlemen, on this faded old label, we can still make out the words Grand and Rapid. <laughs> what am I bid for this lovely piece, which was a gift from Cleopatra to Henry VIII? Twenty-five dollars. Heavenly days, that sounds like Mrs. Carstairs. McGee, it is Mrs. Carstairs. Well, she's made her bid. She'll have to lie in it. <laughs> Twenty-five dollars, I'm bid. Who'll make it thirty? Thirty for that broken down old... Thirty, I hear. Who'll make it forty? Do I hear forty? McGee, for goodness sakes, be quiet. If nobody says forty, you're stuck for the... I hear forty. What? <laughs> The lady with the little man in the rib is 40. Now, just a darn minute, but... $50. Ah, $50. Do I hear 75? Going once at 50. Twice. Sold for $50 to Mrs. Carstairs. Shall we deliver it for you, Mrs. Carstairs? Thank you, no. My chauffeur will call for you. Yoo-hoo! Hello there, Mrs. Carstairs. <laughs> oh, how do you do, Mrs. McGee? Hi, Carsty. That was quite a slug of moolah you just put out for that worm-eaten pile of condemned lumber. <laughs> The darn thing's got three legs like Queen Anne and one like Leon Earl. <laughs> oh, I guess Mrs. Carstairs knows what she's doing, dearie. I happen to be buying this highboy for my husband, Mr. McGee. 
Mr. Carstairs is extremely fond of antiques. <laughs> There's as perfect a straight line as I ever heard. <laughs> But I haven't got the heart to deliver the bomb. That's a pretty heavy piece of furniture for your chauffeur to handle, Mrs. Carstairs. And maybe McGee would help him carry it out. Oh, thank you, my dear, but my footman will assist him. We still have one footman, you know, although our domestic staff has been cut to the bone. He has? How? <laughs> Slicing toast for hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> Did I tell you, Mrs. McGee, that I was forced to discharge my upstairs maid last week? Oh, no. That's too bad, Mrs. Carstairs. Why? The impudent girl came downstairs. <laughs> uh, tell me, Mrs. Carstairs, do you plan to stay in town all summer? We are undecided, my dear. We might go to our hunting lodge in Maine, our chalet in the Berkshires, our hacienda in Acapulco... Or we may visit our orange groves in Santa Barbara. Ah, uh, what kind of horns did you raise, Carsty? Valencias or navels? The latter, Mr. McGee, although we refrain from using the more vulgar term. <laughs> Mr. Carstairs and I refer to them as citrus umbilicus. Okay, <laughs> Mrs. McGee. Boy, boy, oh boy, what a character. You and she don't seem to get along, do you, McGee? I get along all right, but she don't. <laughs> she forgets the upper crust is just a lot of crumbs held together by their own dough. <laughs> Attention, ladies and gentlemen, your attention, item 413 in the catalog, a genuine dreadnought trunk, 75 years old, contents unknown from the estate of Mr. J. Farthington Campwell. Campwell? Hey, he's the rich millionaire that had all his money hid around his house. Why, that trunk might be full of cash. Not very likely, dearie. His estate spent 40 years in probate court. Well? If there was any money in that trunk, there'd be three lawyers sitting on the lid. <laughs> well, just the same, I got a good notion. What am I meant for this steady, interesting old trunk, ladies and gentlemen? A dreadnought trunk is practically indestructible. Two dollars. The little man bids two dollars. A ridiculous offer, friends. Two dollars for a handsome trunk which might contain valuable property worth thousands of dollars. Four dollars. <laughs> Four dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. Six dollars. Six dollars. Ah, what spirited bidding, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Will some mad, impulsive spendthrift raise the bid to six fifty? Seven bucks. Seven dollars the little man offers. Let's stop matching nickels, ladies and gentlemen, and get on with this. Huh? This is an auction sale, not... Nine dollars, and that's my last offer. Now, McGee, if you plan to put that moth-eaten old grab bag in our hall closet now... Nine dollars on bid, do I hear? Ten dollars. Ten dollars and three cents. Uh... What was that again, son? I says ten dollars and three cents. Take your earmuffs off, Buster. Spring is here. <laughs> Going once at ten dollars and three cents. Going twice. Sold to the short sport and a long sweater. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Here we go again. And here's your dough, wise guy, in cash. Ah, and a pleasant surprise it is, my friend. Will you take it with you, or shall I have our 12 beautiful dancing girls carry you home in it? Well, that's an interesting question, McGee. How do we get it home? You stay here a minute, Molly. I'll go get a cab, and the driver will help you load it on. Will Hurry, you? McGee. Uh, do you really think this trunk has something valuable in it, Mr. Auctioneer? Lady, I'm going to be honest for the first time today. That's the worst hunk of junk that ever broke an express company's heart. And I wouldn't give you a counterfeit dime for it if it was full of nylons, T-bones, and Greg arson. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, item 14 on... <laughs> Billy Mills from the orchestra and dream.
that trunk heavy. Phew. Cab driver said he hadn't had a bigger load on since New Year's Eve. <laughs> You're not going to leave it out here on the porch, are you? Mm, why not? Well, people might think we'd just come back from someplace, in which case they must have thought we'd been away. Mm -hmm. And if they didn't miss us any more than that, my feelings are hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I better get it in the house at that. If it's full of money, it'll be safer inside. Yes, it would. Open the door, will you? Okay. One, two, three. This is... This is... Whew. That's the heaviest piece of luggage I ever saw. Hey, but Molly, did you hear it jingle when we moved it? Yeah, what do you suppose it's full of? Pie tins? Look, Snooky, these trunks haven't been manufactured for 75 years. Oh, really? And 75 years ago, they used gold money. Oh? If this trunk is full of $10 gold pieces, for instance, why, we're modestly rich. In a totally sort of a way. <laughs> we're also in trouble with Uncle Sam, aren't we? No, the government will pay us 32 bucks an ounce for gold, or something like that. And this thing must weigh 300 pounds. Allowing 60 pounds for the trunk, that leaves 240 pounds... Sixteen times two hundred and forty is how much? Three thousand eight hundred and forty. Oh, I'd like to check that with the quiz kid. <laughs> Boy, that's near enough. Three thousand eight hundred and forty times thirty-two bucks is... Ooh. A hundred and twenty-two thousand eight hundred and eighty. Wow. A hundred and twenty-three thousand bucks. Why, we're rich, Molly. Now I can take Anthony Adverse back to the public library. <laughs> now, wait a minute, McGee. Before we fill the swimming pool with champagne... Hadn't we better see what's actually in this trunk? Oh, sure, but it's just a formality, kiddo. Suppose it's only got $5 gold pieces in it. That's still 60,000 frog skins. Where's my keys? Ah, here they are. Ah, oh, we'll see. That little one in the middle looks like it might fit. That's the key to the padlock on the tool shed on Uncle Sycamore's ranch that I stayed at in 1915. <laughs> Heavenly days, don't you ever throw away a key? Nope. No good? No. I'll try this one. Key to a briefcase I had when I sold insurance in 1919. <laughs> no? It's too flat. You could pry it open with a crowbar, McGee, or drop it out of an upstairs window if you find nine friends stupid enough to carry it upstairs. Oh, no. Just wait a minute. There's a right way and a wrong way to do things, Tootsie, and I haven't used up the wrong ways yet. <laughs> Now, let's see if I can... Hello, Mr. McGee and Mrs. McGee. Creepers, what's the trunk for? Going someplace? We're going every place, Alice, if this trunk is as full of money as himself here thinks. <laughs> we bought it at an auction. Used to belong to a rich millionaire, Alice, a miser, J. Farthington Crampwell, the third. And when he kicked off, they found money hid all over his house. Oh? Yeah, overlooking this trunk, of course, out of sheer courtesy to Mr. McGee. <laughs> yeah. Well, jeepers, who'd be dumb enough to think of a trunk like this being full of money? Well, I don't like to mention names, Alice. I don't like to mention names, but I could stroke his five o'clock shadow from where I'm standing. Okay, okay. Scoff if you want to. Be right. But by George, when I get this trunk open and start counting out cold cash, you got any trunk keys, Alice? <laughs> no, I haven't, Mr. McGee. I don't own a trunk. I just have airplane luggage. Oh, do you like airplane travel, Alice? Do I, creamy, to sail along 15,000 feet in the air with your meals brought to you and no tipping, and with those good-looking pilots saying excuse me when they bump into your elbow that you stuck out when you saw them coming and everything? <laughs> Jeepers, I'll bet I'd love it if I ever tried it. Look, kids, this chatter is very amusing, I'm sure, but with a 40-cent lock standing between me and 100,000 bucks, I'm in no mood for Priddle Prattle. <laughs> you got any keys, Alice? Well, here's a key to my toolbox at the factory. Try it, McGee. Okay. No, no, that won't unlock it. Isn't that a coincidence? It won't unlock my toolbox either. <laughs> It won't? Well, then how do you work if you can't get at your tools? Oh, I don't keep them in my toolbox. They get it too dirty. <laughs> you see, it's a toolbox that one of the boys that he works with the next bench made for me. Uh-huh. Things have changed since my day, I guess. I always had to give girls canned ear flowers. Now you got to woo a gal with a hunk of sheet iron and five hours overtime. <laughs> well, you... He made me a perfectly super toolbox, Mr. McGee. Yeah. I keep my bobby pins and nail polish and compact in it. Mm -hmm. But I can't get the toolbox open, so I look simply a mess at work. Mm. Well, why don't you take some extra cosmetics along, Alice? And hurt the boy that he works at the next bench to me's feelings? Oh, no. Well, I hope you get the trunk open, Mr. McGee. Well, thanks, kid. <clears throat> She 
She was a big help. Well, you bought this trunk, dearie. Getting it open is your problem. Well, don't worry. I'll get it open. Let me try some more of these keys. Let's see. Ah, oh, dear. Talk about inefficiency. I'll bet you don't know what two-thirds of those keys are for. Oh, I don't, eh? Well, for your information, Mrs. McGee, this key here is for the ignition lock on that Apperson jackrabbit I used to drive for old Mr. Balderson back in Peoria. Well, that was 30 years ago. Well, he told me not to lose it, didn't he? <laughs> and this key here is to... Well, I'll admit that one's no good. Here, throw it away. Uh, do you mind if I don't? No, why? That's the key to our front door. <laughs> yes, my gosh, I never even know. Hello, you. folks, how's it? Well, what's the trunk for? Taking a trip? No, Mr. Wilcox, McGee bought this trunk at an auction. You know what an auction is. Sure, that's a place where a bunch of strangers stand around and bicker about who pays the most money for something none of them really wants. Yeah, but this trunk is full of dough, Junior, I think. You got any keys with you? No, I haven't. You see, McGee, there are men who don't consider it necessary to carry four pounds of keys. Himself here always has so many keys on him, he's getting round shouldered in the hips, Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> well, why doesn't he use one of them to open the trunk? Because none of them seems to fit the trunk. That's the reason why I don't. <laughs> now, let's see. This one here might be... Gee, one. it's a shame to let a handsome, sturdy trunk like that get looking so shabby when just a little... No, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> You don't have to... It's bring... a lucky thing. I just happen to have some Johnson's wax and a cloth. <laughs> Let's see what it'll do for that wood and leather. Oh, now, Mr. Wilcox, you don't have to do that, my goodness. Get away from that trunk, Junior. I got work to do. So have I. Only waxing a piece of baggage like this isn't really work. It's fun. Oh, for the love of... Look, that. see how the Johnson's wax helps bring back the beauty of the wood, even after all this time. Oh, for the... And see what it does for the leather... Gee whiz, it's criminal not to protect an expensive trunk like this with wax. Save it from dampness and dryness and dust. What that got to do? Why, you'd be amazed how much protection a coat of Johnson's wax gives a thing like this. I don't know, Mr. Wilcox. We amaze very slowly. Look, Waxy, get away, will you? I'm not interested in the outside of this trunk. It's the inside I want to get at. Oh, I don't think you'll find it necessary to wax the inside, pal. You see the inside. Don't gun it. Can't you forget that wax for one second? No. Well, I will say it looks a lot better already, Mr. Wilcox. Why, of course it does. You see, Johnson's Look, wife... Junior. Yeah? I don't like to be inhospitable. <laughs> but if you can't contribute more toward getting this trunk open than a lecture on wax, go home, will you? Oh, now, McGee. Hey, where'd you say you got this trunk, pal? At an auction sale. Used to belong to a rich millionaire. Say... A cousin of mine, Big Moxie Wilcox, bought a 40-year-old wooden box at an auction once, and he said it was the smartest thing he ever did in his life. Yeah? Boy, was he happy when he got home and opened it up. Yeah? You know what was in it? Here's your hat, Junior. <laughs> and if that box was full of Johnson's wax, put it on an Amstray. <laughs> Polite of you, McGee. Oh, polite nothing. Any guy with my dough doesn't have to be polite. <laughs> Doggone it, I wish one of these keys had fit. Hadn't we got any trunk keys in the house? Oh, someplace, I suppose. I'll oh. ask Beulah. Oh. oh, Beulah? Beulah? Somebody bowl for Beulah? <laughs> Yeah, we got any trunk keys laying around, Beulah? If we have so, they ain't never come to Beulah's attention. <laughs> Where did this old trunk come from? Well, Mr. McGee bought it at an auction, Beulah. He thinks it might be full of $10 gold pieces. Mm -hmm. $10 gold pieces? What is they? <laughs> Molly, please, you're too excited about this thing. Hold yourself down a little. It might not be full of $10 gold pieces at all. It might be only $5 gold pieces. I didn't say I thought so. I said you thought so. Ma'am, if I had me a trunk, I suspicion was full of Indian pennies. I'd tear the lid off with my teeth and nails. <laughs> you wouldn't tear the lid off this one that way, Beulah. This is a genuine dreadnought trunk. They built these things to toss off the top of the stagecoach. Yes, but my point was that if it was just an old trunk between Beulah and Affluence, <laughs> I could kick a hole in with my bare feet. <laughs> uh, now, what would you do with all that money, Beulah? Well, my goodness, ma'am, I said I'd go right... Well, doggone if I know. <laughs> Anything over ten bucks, I get stage fright. <laughs> but I can think of something. You and Ira could really get married on a trunk full of money, couldn't you, Beulah? No, sir. What? Well, Ira, he'd be too proud to marry me if I was a rich woman. Mm -hmm. In which case, I'd dump it in the river. Because, <laughs> you see, it ain't much fun sitting in the movies holding hands with a bank book. <laughs> Not that I ever try it. Well, I'll take a chance on being unhappy, Beulah. 
Right now, I'm in the position of an amateur musician who's got a chance to conduct the symphony. Why, McGee, said she, shaking her tambourine? <laughs> if I can find the right key, I'll be in the money. Say, if you can find the right key, you'll be... Oh, oh. <laughs> Love that man. The King's Man singing Yagata Yagata. Professors of English all agree that making conversation is an art. They should hear you making conversation with me. They'd have a change of heart. When I put my arm around you and we're going for a walk. Must you yet a day, yet a day, yet a day, yet a day, talk, talk, talk. When we're sitting close together in a cozy taxi cab. Must you yet a day, 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 yet a
Or $110,000 if it's full of $5 gold pieces. That's just half as much as if it's full of ten. Oh, I see. <laughs> uh, would you think it forward of me if I wanted to take your temperature, Sonny? Yes, I would. And you get your big fat hand off my forehead. <laughs> He's not feverish, Doctor. After all, there's a slight chance that this trunk might have money in it. For the love of Mike, why doesn't he look? I've been telling you, dumbbell, I haven't got a key that'll open it. The only key that'll fit a dreadnought trunk is a dreadnought key. And that's why I think it's just Molly. Hey, well, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just trying something, dearie. Huh? My little brother got locked in a trunk once, and my mother opened it with a hairpin. Oh, don't be ridiculous. That trunk will have to be chiseled open. Don't be so sure, Gabby. Women can do more with a hairpin than it... Ah, ah, there it is, McGee. I unlocked it. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Take that end of it, Doc. When I say three, tip it over. Uh, why don't we just raise the lid and peek in? No, no, no. It's more dramatic this way. Oh. You ready? Yep. One, two, three... <laughs> Days. What are they? Dreadnought trunk keys. <laughs> my, my. You'll need a bigger key ring now. Oh, this is ridiculous. Some time ago, I gave a friend of mine a package of Johnson's Car New to try on his car. He is now an enthusiastic Car New user. Why, this stuff is even better than you said it was, he volunteered. He brought his car around to show me what Car New had done for it. A light gray 1940 model that really was beautiful, spick and span with a showroom shine. You know, in these days when it's hard to get your car serviced, you can still keep it beautiful and protect the paint job with Johnson's Car New. Because Carnu is so easy to use, you can quickly do the job yourself. Carnu is the auto polish that does two things at once, cleans and polishes with one application. It's a liquid. You apply it with a cloth, let it dry to a white powder, and wipe off the powder. Carnu does an amazing cleaning job without injury to the finish and with minimum elbow grease. And it leaves a satin smooth finish that's easier to keep clean. You know, you have to try Carnu to know how good it is. Your dealer has it, the same reliable Johnson's Car New, spelled C-A-R-N-U. Oh, I had a train clean, his name was Daniel. Saved up his money to buy his own spaniel. Oh, up in time. Hey, Molly, you know what I did? Had I better sit down before you tell me? No, look, I took all those dreadnought trunk keys, 7,000 of them. Yeah? I took them to a locksmith, and he gave me 20 bucks for them. Well, good for you, dear. Yeah. You made a profit on your investment after all. Yeah, and because you were smart enough to open the trunk with a hairpin, I, I bought you a little present. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you, darling. Yeah. What is it? Package of hairpins. Oh. <laughs> yep. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday.